Let's now tackle the Anti-Sexual Harassment Act of 1995 or Republic Act Number no. 7877. What is the concept of sexual harassment about? Sexual harassment is the act of demanding or requesting sexual favor by a person having authority or moral ascendancy over another, regardless of whether the demand or request is accepted or not. Sexual harassment can be committed only when there is a superior subordinate relationship because sexual harassment is not about a man taking advantage of a woman because of sexual desire. It is about power being exercised by a superior officer over his subordinates. The power emanates from the fact that the superior can remove the subordinate from his workplace even if the latter would refuse his amorous advances. The, grav the gravamen of the offense in sexual harassment is not the violation of the employee's sexuality, but the abuse of power by the employer. It is not necessary that the demand, request, or requirement of a sexual favor be articulated in a categorical oral or written statement. It may be discerned with equal certitude from the acts of the superior. It is not essential that the demand, request, or requirement be made as a condition for continued employment or for promotion. It is enough that the sexual advances or request for sexual favor resulted in creating an intimidating, hostile, or offensive environment for the employee. In what place? Can sexual harassment be committed? Sexual harassment can be committed in a work-related or employment environment or in an education or training environment. How is sexual harassment committed in a work-related environment? In a work-related or employment environment, sexual harassment is committed when sexual favor is made as a condition for hiring re-employment or continued employment or granting favorable compensation, terms, conditions, promotions, or privileges, or when refusal to grant the sexual favor results in discrimination, deprivation of employment opportunities, diminished employment opportunities, or other adverse effects, or when the sexual advances impair employee rights or privileges or result in an intimidating, hostile, or offensive environment. How is sexual harassment committed in an education or training environment? In an education or training environment, sexual harassment is committed when the sexual favor is made as a condition for giving passing grades, granting honors and scholarships, or paying benefits, privileges, or considerations, or when sexual advances result in an intimidating, hostile, or offensive environment. Who can be victims of sexual harassment? In a work-related environment, sexual harassment can be committed against an employee or applicant for employment. In an education or training environment, sexual harassment can be committed against a person under the care custody or supervision of the offender, or a person whose education or training is entrusted to the offender. Who may be liable for sexual harassment? The following may be held liable for sexual harassment. An employer, manager, supervisor, or agent of the employer. A teacher, instructor, professor, coach, or trainer. Any person having authority, influence, or moral ascendancy over another in a work or training or education environment, or any person who directs, induces, or cooperates with another to commit an, any act of uh, sexual harassment. Employers and heads of educational or training institutions are obliged to create a committee on decorum and investigation, 
and promulgate rules and regulations prescribing the guidelines on proper decorum in the workplace, educational or training institutions. The procedure for the investigation of sexual harassment cases and administrative sanctions, therefore. The rules and regulations must be jointly approved by the designate, uh, duly designated representatives of employees or students, trainees. For employers, the Committee on Decorum and Investigation shall be composed of at least one representative from management, the rank and file employees, the supervisory employees, and the union, if one exists. For educational or training institutions, the Committee on Decorum and Investigation shall be composed of at least one representative from the administration, trainers, teachers, instructors, professors or coaches, and students or trainees. The Committee on Decorum and Investigation shall conduct meetings with officers and employees, teachers, instructors, professors, coaches, trainers, and students or trainees to increase understanding and prevent incidents of sexual harassment. It shall also conduct the investigation of alleged cases constituting sexual harassment. Remember the liability of the employer and educational or training institutions. Employers and educational or training institutions are solidarily liable for damages arising from the acts of sexual harassment committed in the employment, educational or training environment if they do not take immediate action on any sexual harassment incident reported to them by the offended party. Finally, remember the victim of work-related or education or training-related sexual harassment may institute a separate and independent action for damages and other affirmative relief.